There was a time during the history of the Israelites where their disobedience grew so rapidly that the Lord handed them over to the oppression of the Philistines. For 40 years, they suffered and longed for someone to set them free. During this terrible time, there was a man named Manoah from the tribe of Dan. His wife was unable to become pregnant. They desperately longed for a child of their own, but it never happened. One day, an angel of the Lord appeared to Manoah's wife and told her that she would have a son. She was excited, but found it hard to believe. The angel of the Lord appeared a second time and told her that she was not allowed to drink any wine or eat any forbidden food. He also told her that the boy's hair should never be cut. This was to be a sign to others that he was consecrated to God. When the boy was born, she named him Samson. Samson grew up to be a strong young man. He had long hair, and his mother made sure that he obeyed all the instructions the angel gave. Samson was blessed by God, and God's spirit began to work in him. One day, while Samson was in Timnah, he saw a beautiful young Philistine woman. He liked her very much and wanted to take her as his wife. There was just one problem. The Philistines were Israel's enemy. Samson told his parents about his plan, but they were not happy. How could their son even think of marrying a Philistine girl? They were Israel's enemy and treated them poorly. Little did Samson's parents know that God was planning this all along. Samson, after all, was to be Israel's judge, born to free them from the oppression of the Philistines. The plan went forward, and Samson was set to marry the Philistine girl. The girl's father gave Samson 30 young men to be his companions. During the festivities of the wedding, Samson told the men a riddle and said he would give them 30 fine linen robes and festivity garments if they could solve it. Then the men forced Samson's wife to entice him to tell her the answer. She succeeded and the men won the bid. Samson was furious for being tricked. He had to keep his end of the bargain and was forced to give the men their 30 linen robes and festival garments. In order to do that, Samson killed 30 men and stole their linen robes. What's worse, when he came to take his bride, he found out that someone else had married her in the meantime. Samson was going to get even with the men who tricked him. He captured 300 foxes and tied torches to their tails. The foxes ran like crazy, setting everything on fire. All the crops and trees burned down. Now the Philistines were angry too. They, in return, went and killed Samson's previous wife and her father. When Samson heard the news, he was furious. The situation escalated. At that time, both the Philistines and Israelites saw Samson as a problem. The Israelites tied Samson with rope and brought him to the Philistines. With ease, Samson snapped the rope, picked up a jawbone of a donkey, and killed 1,000 Philistine men. Years later, Samson went to the city of Gaza. When the inhabitants learned that he was there, they devised a plan to capture him. They would wait for him until morning and then kill him. Samson, though, did not stay the entire night, and before the morning broke, he walked to the city gates, ripped the doors open, and carried them on his shoulder to the top of the hill. In his disobedience, he fell in love with another woman and told her the secret of his great strength, his long hair. The woman didn't care about Samson and told the Philistines how to capture him. That night, while he was sleeping, she chopped off his hair. When the Philistines captured Samson, there was nothing he could do. The Spirit of God left him, and his amazing strength was gone. They poked his eyes out and put Samson in jail. Finally, they caught the man who wreaked havoc in their land. There in jail, Samson was forced to grind wheat, the job of an ox. What the Philistines did not realize was that Samson's hair was starting to grow back. 
One day, the Philistines took Samson out of prison. Samson came to stand between the pillars supporting the roof of the building where the festivities were held. Blind and weak, Samson asked one of the servants to place his hands on the pillars. He prayed one last time for God's strength, and with amazing force took down the pillars that held up the building. It caved in, and Samson, along with 3,000 men and women, perished.